If Sonic 2 was the game that made me a gamer, the Sony PlayStation was the catalyst that expanded my view of what gaming was. The Sega Genesis, called the Mega Drive in every other region, was purchased by my brother on launch. When it comes to childhood memories, with video games most consist of this little Korg sounds producing machine, I don't remember my initial impressions of Sonic 1, or really playing through it myself, except my brother waking me up to see the ending as I had fallen asleep with him trying to beat it. But I do remember Sonic 2, extremely well in fact. This is the game that made me a gamer. Sonic 2 was my game that I got to beat on my own. So what came next? The door flew open and there stood my brother holding Sonic the Hedgehog 2. He popped it into the Model 1 Sega Genesis and turned that sucker on and there the on-screen static was replaced with the infamous Sega intro. Sega! Dr. Robotnik, Eggman in Japan and I'm sure other regions was at it again, stealing animals and making them robots, polluting the earth or Mobius, whatever. And according to Sonic CD, is causing the world to speed to a post-apocalyptic future similar to that of James Cameron's vision of the future. This time, however, he has a friend, a fox with two tails called Miles Prower, nicknamed Tails. I rushed off the couch and sat down next to him and saw all the glory of the first zone. He got to Chemical Plant Zone and he paused, rushing over to the landline, called his buddy and exclaimed, Guess what? I got Sonic 2! I couldn't hear his buddy, of course, but his friend must have been calling BS because my brother held the phone to the TV speaker so he could hear it. My brother then threw the controller at me, reset the console, and walked off continuing his conversation. The controller was in my hands. I saw him go to the first zone, so I emulated to the best of my ability the best I could. I recognize Sonic 2 is the superior game to 1, not only objectively, but subjectively as well. Like, I find it tremendously more fun. Strange enough though, as a kid, I just remember thinking how the first zone was a step back graphically from the first game. Everything had a clay-like texture and sheen to it in part one. And this one used more dithering than I didn't like the music as much. For the record, I'll take Sonic 2 over 1 any day. I'm just sharing my experiences at that moment. Eventually I got through Zone 1. The first hurdle I truly had was this section here. It was so frustrating. I kept game overing here. In one attempt I got past it but then fell at the moving platforms and couldn't make it back up. My brother came back, kicked me off, reset and started playing again. Just like Sonic 1, I sat there watching him go through the game, studying what he did. At some point on a retry after game overing, I went to go get popcorn and sat back down. The time came where he made it to the death egg zone. It looked impossible. A mecha Sonic followed by Robotnik, <clears throat> Eggman, <clears throat> jumping into an egg-shaped mech himself. He had racked up lives and kept dying and dying, but sooner or later under the twilight of darkness and all the lights being off, the mech fell apart. I saw the ending, the one without all seven Chaos Emeralds, of course. By this hour of the night, I was told by our mother that it was my bedtime. So I retreated to my room and I fell into a slumber. The next morning, it was my turn. I breezed through zone one again, but was temporarily stuck in the same spot. But I made it through after a few deaths. Aquatic zone was annoying, but I managed to get through it just fine. I ran out of time hanging around the Sonic slot machines in Casino Night, but made it through there. It wasn't until Mystic Cave Zone that I game over it again. I was determined, however, and starting over I pushed through. Oil Zone was another rage-inducing spot at that time. Eventually I clawed my way to Wing Fortress Zone and couldn't do it. I don't remember how long I played for that day, but it was so much more than I probably should have. It was the weekend, so it's not like I had school or anything, but I was pulled away to accompany my mother for some errands. The day went by and I wouldn't be able to play again until nighttime. 
I went through again, but my bedtime came and I was haunted at Metropolis Zone. The next day, my brother started playing it again and collecting emeralds. He didn't get them all that day, but he made a solid long attempt. The controller was back in my hands and I managed to get all the way to Death Egg Zone myself. I was there, at the end, and I lost all my lives to Eggman. Game over. I immediately got to the same spot again and handed my brother the controller. Asked him if he could beat it for me. He complied. I ended up loving the game so much that I would play it repeatedly, also collecting Chaos Emeralds of my own. I would get to the Mad Doctor and hand the controller to my brother. He would beat it for me and I would watch the credits roll. A moment of complete shock was witnessing my brother get all seven Chaos Emeralds and turning into Super Sonic. I had no idea what Super Saiyans were, but here was a small little window of things to come. Look at Sonic transform. I imagine a blood-curdling manly scream accompanying his transformation. I'm not sure how long I kept up getting to the end only for my brother to finish the fight for me, but it all came to a halt. It was surprising to me at first, a betrayal of sorts. I asked as normally I did and went to hand the controller off, and he replied coldly, no, do it yourself, and walked off. I was defeated. How would I ever beat Robotnik? Well, here started my first lesson, possibly, in working hard and self-reliance. This is by no means in these very life lessons that the real life me has encountered. It was a parallel of sorts. I don't know how many times I ran through the game, eventually not even dying once for the exception of rare deaths due to glitches. But my triumph finally came. I beat Robotnik myself. And shortly after, I was able to collect all emeralds on my own and beat the game to earn the true ending myself. If I could do this, I know I could beat other games. I guess I'll start playing more games. What's next? A gamer was born that day. I fondly look back at my brother telling me no. There's nothing like the sense of achievement of seeing a project through yourself. A shadow of it, of course. A small taste of things to come as I went through school, graduated, started my current career path, and earned my bachelor's degree, etc. It's funny. I look back at the Sega Genesis, and I'll always treasure it. In games that cater to me, the Super Nintendo offers much more options. But there is absolutely an emotional attachment to the Sega Genesis. Going back and playing other games like Revenge of Shinobi, Altered Beast, and Wonder Boy. Going through them and seeing the credits roll. Playing Streets of Rage with my cousin and friend. Streets of Rage 2 to me is my favorite beat em up of all time. I am so sorry Fatal Fury fans, I, I do like those games, but to me nothing tops this right here. Streets of Rage 4 was pretty awesome though, and the soundtrack blew me away. Streets of Rage 2 though, and that soundtrack. <clears throat> I know I'm not alone in this sentiment here. The intro to Streets of Rage 2 always reminds me of Enigma's very own Satanist song. I mean, come on! Just listen to this. My one complaint on Streets of Rage, I would say, is the lack of running by Axel. They all run in Streets of Rage 3, but I can see the design of balance being the reason when 2 was developed. Big sprites, awesome levels, and some banging music all equaled for such, such a good time. I had a friend in high school, he grew up a Nintendo person. I remember at one time we were gaming together and I convinced him to play Streets of Rage 2 with me. He called it repetitive, but good. Repetitive? Really? Disappointing. I guess it can be, but I love the damn thing. Batman Returns! My brother rented this. We got stuck on the stairwell with the penguin. Neither of us could get past this. We never beat it. My memories of this are fond, but I've repeatedly tried in recent times to go through this dang game, and it's kind of trash. 
Shinobi 3, the game is peak Sega at their best. I've heard many say 2 is their favorite, and I imagine it's because 3 had changes to be more streamlined, but I love everything about this game. It was so underwhelming to see the hype train for Sonic 2 only the one day in Houston, Texas, while at a Fiesta grocery store, run into a booth actively selling Sonic 3. Like what? My brother and I had no idea 3 was even coming! Fiesta, by the way, are these Hispanic food stores, which I believe are only found in Houston. Why were they selling Sonic 3? Shadow Dancer, I didn't beat this until I was an adult, and it's not even that hard of a game. But I did like it as a kid. Just didn't click with it though. Revenge of Shinobi is a much harder game, and I was able to beat that. But yeah, Shadow Dancer is solid. It's it's a lot of it's a really good time. Then there was Toe Jam and Earl and Panic to Funkotron. I didn't know there was a game prior to this, much less the vast difference in playstyle, but I love this game and I still do. My daughter and I recently did a playthrough together and she thought it was really silly, but had a great time. Humans are on Funkotron and it's your job to catch for them all and send them back to Earth. It's a very unique game with amazing and inspired visuals. The Boogeyman is probably my favorite enemy. As the years went on, the Sega CD would come into the picture, and I love that chunky device as well. Because we had a Gen 1 model, my brother bought the Sega CD bottom loader that goes with it. My favorite Sonic game for the longest time was Sonic CD. The time travel concept really had its hooks in me. Plus, the atmosphere seemed darker in tone, which was really cool. I got to witness and play through the infamous, but somewhat terrible game, Night Trap. I didn't even know there was a huge controversy surrounding that game with court hearings and such. I was gifted Power Rangers one Christmas, and it's another FMV game. Not a very good one, honestly, but one that I loved playing over and over. We never got a 32X. But I did have a childhood friend who did and he would bring it over while we would play Virtual Fighter on it. What a piece of crap that device is. The Genesis was absolutely vital to my childhood. I grew up in a not so great area of Westside Houston, and I'm sure on many levels there was escapism going on. I played outside plenty, and even played football in middle and high school. I got into JROTC. I was an active kid, but perhaps also stayed away from trouble by being knee deep into this console. Nowadays, when it comes to retro games, I can look back and confirm that Nintendo had overall better offerings and catered to more to my taste at this time, but my memories of my brother and childhood are forever linked to this console and for that, I always will default to it, at least with the 16-bit generation of gaming. I really enjoyed sharing and thank you for those who tuned in and stayed around this long. Until next time.